Hello, my name is Teltura. Um, I am the writer of a card generator for the Lord of the Rings trading card game. And this video is intended to be a, an introduction and a tutorial for how to install the generator and how to get started using it. Um, so first off, as a little bit of an introduction, what you're seeing here on the screen um, is some of the output of this generator. Um, so here we can see that the output of the cards is quite big and quite clear. When you compare it to the images that are on the wiki, um, it is literally twice as big uh, due to the high quality AI scaled um, templates that we have available to us. Um, it is also capable of generating cards at this original resolution. We call them original resolution and double resolution. And there is in fact a third resolution uh, called simply huge, which is twice as big as even this. Um, which is quite frankly overkill. But as you can see by the output here, um, the cards that it produces are pretty bang on with the originals. Um, now the, the text has been fiddled with a little bit to get it to fit exactly with the originals um, with these particular examples uh, because different sets used different uh, spacings, different margins, uh, different font weights. Um, it's all but impossible to come up with a single set of values that permits you to create cards that mimic the exact images of all cards, but it gets pretty darn close. Um, and here, down here we can see that uh, here are some original cards that were generated using, uh, using this tool, uh, so it is not limited in any way to uh, only regenerating cards that were created by Decipher. So I'm going to walk you through the entire process of how to get this installed on your computer and how to get started using it. So first of all, here is the uh, the home of the the generator thread here on the last homely house. Uh, there will be a link to this in the description. Um, this first post has all of the various versions that have been uploaded. Uh, so if for historical reasons you need to go back and find a particular old version, you can find it there. But you can typically just come up here to the top um, and get the download for the latest version. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to go to GitHub. This is going to bring us to this screen. Um, this particular zip file is the one that we want to download, so we will click on that. We want to save it. Um, now, this zip file is a little bit different from the code that is actually hosted in the repository. Uh, the code itself is the same, but this also includes a number of uh, card template images, and it includes the program that the script is based upon, which is called Nandek. Um, you can find the script itself and uh, related associated files in here, but if you want those two supplementary pieces, you'll either have to get them manually or just use the, the release zip here. Just waiting for that to download. And then once that is downloaded, we will go ahead and open it up here. And I'm going to go to my desktop, my very messy desktop, and just create a new folder. You can create a, um, a folder anywhere you like. So I'm going to create one called Card Generator, open it up. Now we're going to go ahead and extract all of these files into that location. Now there are, are several types of files that are included. Uh, the ones that we need to worry about here are the cards.csv, which is a spreadsheet that Nandek will be looking for. Um, we have the documentation, which is located here um, as a PDF. Within the, uh, the last homely house, there's also a link to a version of that same documentation, the latest and greatest version here on Google Docs, which you can reference there. The version that is uh, included with the code base is a snapshot of that, um, so it is always particular to that particular version. Here as well, um, we can see that the templates are included. So we have the double size templates and we also have the original size templates. Huge is not included because huge is overkill and um, most people won't need it, but if you need it, it will go here. Uh, we'll go over how to do that uh, a little bit later. Um, so here, if you want to actually get started, you go to the Nandek folder and you open up nandek.exe. And so once this is open, uh, it is going to be you know, this big empty space. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to open up a couple of the files that we extracted. So the first file that we're going to open up is the NDE file, the uh, Lord of the Rings trading card game virtual cards. This is the main file that you need to worry about. Uh, it's a little big and scary, um, but you don't have to actually worry about any of the script. It's just going to be ran. Um, and over here on the right, we, we see where the 
uh, cards themselves are going to be rendered. We also probably want to go ahead and open up settings.txt, which includes a number of uh, different options or settings that you'll be modifying. Uh, for instance, up here you can see the different paths uh, that the script is concerned with. We can see that the cards.csv is where it's going to pull its card data from. You can alter the, where the output of the card goes, uh, where to look for the card portraits that you will be providing, uh, where the templates are that you installed, and so on and so forth. Um, one of the other major settings to worry about is this down here, the um, the size to use. It defaults to double, but you can change this down to original if you are just prototyping or if you want smaller output. And if you've gone through the trouble of installing the huge templates, you can use those instead. Anyway, so besides the settings, um, there's also a couple of uh, replacement files here. Uh, for instance, if I come and open up all text replacements.txt, you may or may not ever have a need to come in here, but one of the things that this generator will do is that it will automatically take some of the more common uh, Tolkien names um, for the TCG and it will automatically replace their non accented versions with accents so that you no longer have to juggle uh, that. So if you find a name that is not on this list that needs to get uh, altered, you can do that here. Um, the other file in there, which is uh, game text replacements, uh, handles things such as automatically bolding damage plus one and uh, other keywords as well. Uh, so if you find that that is malfunctioning, you can come in here under this file. And if, for instance, you decide that uh, toil nine should not be automatically um, bolded, you can come in here and just delete that line and save it. Um, but anyway, you will be spending most of your time here in this in this script, not because you're modifying it, but because this is where the magic happens. So to get it to render, you're going to come over here and click on Validate Deck. It's going to load that cards.csv, and then here we see that the deck is valid. Um, if you make any changes and for some reason the information that you've inputted is invalid, it will tell you here, and you'll know you'll need to go and fix it. Uh, after you've done that, you can click on Build Deck. And we will see over here that it will go through and build all of the of the cards in the file. Now there are only two, so it was fairly quick. Uh, so we have this Steel is Steel, and we have a version of Aragorn Elisar Telkantar. And you can navigate between the different um, cards in your list here. Um, there's a number of nifty little navigation uh, things that you can do here. If you click on Card Preview, for instance, this will give you a full output window that is completely separate from the rest. Um, this window over here is technically scaled, and so sometimes you may see some uh, little bits and pieces of the text that don't look quite right, and it's just because it's getting squished just a little bit. But this is a full render, um, and so if, if you notice any changes, try pulling out the card preview and see if they still show up here. You can also use your mouse wheel, which I am doing here, just flipping back and forth, to navigate through the cards while you're on this window. It doesn't work over here, but it does in the card preview window. Um, and then one nice thing as well that you can do is that if you are re-rendering just a particular um, card, you can right-click on this window and it will re-render just that card so that you don't have to go through the whole validate and build for the entire deck every single time, just the one that you're looking for. So now that we've done that, um, let's take a look at the actual uh, CSV. So let's navigate back up here to our card generator. Now, there is a CSV, which is the actual file that is being read, but there is also a, um, an ODS file, which is for uh, LibreOffice or OpenOffice. And the reason that there are both of them is because um, spreadsheet programs tend to be very obnoxious, let's say. Um, for instance, when you save a CSV in a file in, in a in a program like this, it is going to hold on to the file and not let anything else open it, which is just obnoxious. Um, on top of that, things such as formatting, the width of the columns, and so on, is not going to persist if you were were to open up the CSV every single time. Um, you can see that there are some nice things like the the frozen columns here on the left. Uh, the size of the game text column is very wide, that sort of thing. Uh, that's not going to persist if you um, open up the CSV over and over. So typically what I do is I come in here and make whatever changes I need to. So let's say instead of a Moria card that that is an Elven card. If I save the ODS, it, um, we come over here into Nandek and we'll see that whoops, we altered the other card. We'll see that nothing has changed because I did not modify cards.csv. But if I come in here and I do File, Save a Copy, 
I can come in here and tell it to save and overwrite the cards.csv. In which case, I come over here and I will find that my changes have propagated. It is now using the Elven template instead of the Moria template. And so if you find that you don't want to be juggling CSVs um, and you don't necessarily want to use um, XLSX, which I believe is, is supported natively, you can also utilize uh, Google Sheets. So if I come over here and open up a same copy of the, uh, the cards.csv, but it has been uploaded and converted here to a Google Sheet, I can come up here to the URL and we are going to copy this big mess between the D and the edit which is the document ID. And then we're going to go into settings.txt and instead of cards.csv, we're going to change it to that document ID. And then when we tell it to render, this will take a moment, it's going to download that CSV and parse it. And we can see that it is now defaulted back to that Moria template, which is what we have up here. So let's go ahead and change this over to say Gandalf. We'll save that here. And then we'll right click here. And we see that it is now changed to the Gandalf uh, template, just like we updated on the uh, on the actual Google Sheet itself. So um, let's go ahead and change this back to the local cards.csv. I want to show what it does when you are rendering a whole lot of cards. So let me copy over a cards.csv that I've already prepared. So we're going to overwrite what's here, and it's going to have about 20 cards in it. So for me to show that off, let's go ahead and keep this uh, particular folder open. So I, I navigated to the card output, and now we're going to come over here again and hit validate deck. It's going to say that, see that everything is valid, and then we're going to click on build deck. And so we'll see that as it goes through each of these cards, I did not save it. So if you make any changes to your settings.txt, make sure you save it. So let's do a validate again and a build. And now we'll see it start to go through all of those files. And so here we see that each of the individual files are going to start being outputted into the, um, into the folder here. Now, many of these, as we look at them, we'll see that the, the portraits are missing. Uh, that is because the port the card portraits folder here, um, which came with the zip, is empty except for the two portraits for the two example cards. And so, if it can't find anything, it's not going to blow up. It's just going to continue generating as much as it can. Um, and so, that just means you need to go and place your portrait here in the actual folder. So here we we can see that that the the dimensions of the portrait are simply the, the same dimensions of uh, you know what what is actually presented in the card. So if you have a full art card, then it is going to be this full rectangle. Um, the, the, the taller rectangle also will be the squatter rectangle, depending on uh, what exactly you are doing. And in the documentation, there's a handy table that lists the exact doc, uh, dimensions. In fact, let me just show that to you right now. Um, lost the documentation here. So that is located, let me show it to you in real time, right here. So how do I decide what size to make my portraits? And so this will tell you, depending on which uh, template that you're making, these are the exact dimensions that you should do for characters versus what I call modifier cards, which are your events and your possessions and your artifacts and your conditions, um, sites, and then one ring cards and or full art cards. Um, because all since the, the generator has to support one ring cards, it also by default uh, permits you to create full art cards for any card, uh, such as we see with, uh, with Aragorn here. It fills up the entire card, just like a one ring would. And so here we can see that all of the different cards have been generated here within Nandek itself. So we can navigate through here, uh, going one at a time. We can go through the card preview once again, and we can use the mouse wheel to very quickly uh, flirt back and forth as we need to. As we need to. 
Um, let's see, what else? So let's talk about the, uh, the huge templates. So as I mentioned, if you want to, whoops, wrong one. Oh, well, I may as well show that off. So portrait templates, there is that folder that shows actually, so all of these examples are exact sizes for what you need. Um, so if you want, you can import these into your uh, Photoshop clone of choice and just make sure that it, it fits that particular size. As you can see, huge is monstrous. Um, but here in the templates folder, uh, we have the double res and the original res, which are uh, completely filled with all of the various card templates, all of the individual icons and so forth um, that are needed by the program. Uh, but huge is empty. Um, so let's navigate here to the last homely house um, location. We can hop over to uh, the documentation. And then at the very top of the documentation, there is a section on manual installation, which will tell you about this Reddit thread here, which includes links to all of, to Google Drive um, zip files for each of the resolutions. And so this is where you would go to download the huge resolution, just extract that folder into that huge res export. And just to demonstrate how ridiculously huge they are, We'll go ahead and take a look at this imager album that has all of them. It is taking, you know, quite a bit of time for them to load. And if we want to see the actual size, I'll we'll wait for that to load. Wait, 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 wait. These are ludicrous. I mean, look at that. That's 1428 by 1928. Um, unless you are doing some ridiculously high resolution prints, there's probably not a reason to ever use this resolution. But so here we can see this is the actual size um, on my, you know, 28 inch 1440p monitor. Um, it is huge. So you probably do not need this. Don't worry about it. Um, but if I want to go into the NAND deck real quick, I can change my settings over here so I can show off just what original does. Just save, just hit control S or up here to save the deck. And then we can come over to our very first one and we can right click and re-render that. And so as we can see, it looks a little pixelated now because it is at a lower resolution. And if we go into our card output, we'll see that there is the double version that we rendered a moment ago. And there's also the original, which is smaller. So we can, we can see that it is indeed twice as small, half, half the size. Um, so that's about it. Um, all you got to do is go in and start editing your card uh, to your heart's content. Uh, most of the columns that are in here are fairly self-explanatory if you're at all familiar with the game. Um, there are a handful of them that may trip you up a little bit. Um, for instance, here at the end, there are a number of different columns for editing the uh, editing or overriding text size, text color, things of that nature. All of that information is located within the uh, the documentation so you can look up that particular column and you can see exactly what it is that it controls um, That should have just about all the information you might possibly need if however you're unable to figure anything out Go ahead and contact me um, on the Players Council discord uh, my username there is Katura um, Ask me any questions you need if you can't find it in documentation. I'll be glad to help you um, If you have any questions feel free to post them in the comments below or on that discord um, But yeah that's Nandek. Um, have fun generating cards.